नमस्ते गुड मॉर्निंग नमस्ते शिमला दीदी नमस्ते एवरीवन वेलकम टू द मॉर्निंग सेशन जी नमस्ते सुनील जी सभी को नमस्ते गुड मॉर्निंग एंड वेलकम वी आर डूइंग यूएचबी थ्री एंड वी वर ऑन दिस व्हाट यू कैन सी ऑन द स्क्रीन बिफोर यू in lecture 2 we were trying to see where we are and what we are aiming for so in that process we were looking at what may have been our focus before uhv2 and some shift we may have experienced after uhv2 so before we go ahead yesterday this was also our assignment uh, we had given this in the group also to see if that is the case if we are able to see in our living that we had some assumptions about ourselves about the existence before uhv2 and to see if that assumption for us has changed has this shift taken place in us and if it has what kind of change can we see in our life in our day to day practical living is there a change we can see based on this shift in assumption that may have taken place after uhv2 so before we go ahead further we'd like to hear from you regarding this um we have good morning would you like to share something ha huh, very a very good morning to all aapko bhi aur sabko i want to say here that uh, before uh, uhv is setting and after uhv setting there is a very much change in myself ji uh, first of all uh, i want to tell you that i was uh, already uh, uh, i was thinking about the society also and wanted to live in harmony mm -hmm. with the society family and uh, the rest of the world but uh, i forgot myself uh, as a human being uh, i could not uh, separate myself as a self and human body now uh, i understand about the self and human body and i can now control I, i can control myself now from the uh, behavior of the other peoples now this is a positive change in me that uh, i am not uh, uh, there is a, uh, i i come to know from here the reaction and the response uh, sometimes uh, when dealing with the peoples i react on them but now i uh, positively respond on that i understand that they are like me yes in in very uh, aspects uh, we have just difference of a uh, competence uh, uh, which which will be always present here uh, that is uh, my uh, getting from ehb2 and also uh, i am exploring on it day by day nice and, uh, i have joined the uh, thing yeah one uh, uh, one thing i wanted to ask is when you say that now instead of reacting lot of times you are responding to others would you like to share whether you know it makes you feel good inside or you are feeling like you are being forced to do this uh, uh before it uh, when i react uh, with uh, someone uh, i mm, feel uh, sometimes uh, unhappy mm -hmm. due to their uh, behavior uh, i thought that they should not do uh, mm -hmm. uh, this way mm -hmm. but uh, when uh, 
now um, after doing a uh, uhv1 and uh, uh, now getting a uhv2 i realized that uh, they are human beings and they have also problems so we have to think from uh, there and also so yes. now uh, i am happy and uh, nice. and and also a cool person now very nice ji yeah this is very significant you see if we are trying yes. to just superficially not react outside but hmm. inside hmm. we are disturbed we will notice that we are not feeling comfortable but once you are able to not react inside also once you are really accepting the other seeing from mm. their perspective like you said mm. and then doing what you need to do you will find you are mm. more calm so this is very significant isn't it in your experience yeah, yeah. you can notice that shift that's very nice yeah yeah nice thank you for sharing well so i am definitely seeing a shift in myself before mm -hmm. uhv you know i was not very much thinking about myself i was thinking more about the others mm -hmm. how they are behaving how they are living but after uhv i one thing that i am able to see changing in myself is that now um, i am able to see more of myself how i am behaving what i am thinking what are my intentions and whatever abhi just madan bhaiya just said that the response and reaction part this has changed in me also so mm -hmm. earlier in case of any incident in college or at home there would be a, an instant reaction from my side so in if i am wrong then there is a reaction and if i am not wrong then there was an explanation i used to explain that oh why am i not wrong but now i have seen that whether i am right or wrong but i take some time to respond so this is is also changed in me that i am taking some time you know, before saying something or before responding to anything this is another mm -hmm. change that i have seen in myself mm -hmm. and one change i shared yesterday also i don't remember whether i shared it in english session or hindi the desire to you know, own things mm -hmm. that has reduced very nice earlier i was very even whenever i used to see something or someone told me okay this this thing it is good so i had that very strong urge to go and buy that thing but now that that thing is missing in me i don't know why but it is missing that if even if someone tells me or shows me something i don't have that urge that stronger that i used to have earlier to go and buy that thing yes so these, these are few shifts that i am seeing in myself really very nice very nice see this is again another reflection of what is our state within so earlier when we were unhappy inside we thought you know we we may not have been aware of it but we thought we'll get this happiness from outside so we kept looking outside for the happiness so get new clothes buy new things and somewhere you know we would feel good about it for some time but then afterwards we were back to that same state why because the self we did not have happiness in the self and that is what is significant that is what can stay that is where the possibility of continuity is there when we try to get this happiness from outside one is even if we are trying to get it from the feeling from others you are dependent on the other person you have to you know be at the beck and call of the whims and fancies of the other person and also if you are trying to get it through physical facility we know that you know that is not going to be possible we can keep accumulating we will keep this is why we don't know how much to accumulate because at the end of it again there is that void in the self that lack of happiness in the self so again we go out and try to purchase more but 
that shift when it happens, when we are calmer inside, when that happiness in the self is there at more moments, we don't feel the need to try to get this happiness from outside through physical facility. So now we also, you know, we also got this information that physical facility is required for the body, the material part. The self cannot get much through the physical facility, cannot get happiness through the physical facility. So with that understanding, now when we look at physical facility, first thing we start looking is, do I really need it? Is there a requirement for me to get this? Or do I already have enough at home that may not be being utilized properly? So that drop happens in our purchasing. And we are able to see that, you know, we already may have sufficient. So we feel prosperous that we have enough. So that is a very good sign. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Didi. Good morning. Didi, the shift that I have been experiencing after UHV2 is uh, I used to be quite uncomfortable at office, you know, with my fellow colleagues. And everybody was a different person. They have different uh, ways of working. And uh, many times I used to get so tense that I used to bring that tension back to home. And then also I uh, to spoil the entire atmosphere. But now, after UHP2, there has been a paradigm shift here. And uh, this is of relationships, and I've removed all my presumptions about people. And I behave with them the way, uh, the best way that I can. And uh, once I'm sending good vibrations to them, and I have that feeling of relationship with them. Similarly, I'm getting the responses from those people, and this. The entire office uh, has now become so harmonious. The entire situation at office has become so harmonious that I really am thankful to UHP for this paradigm shift and me. Very nice. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, Namaste, Shamila Didi. Namaste. Uh, uh, this journey of attending universal human values uh, at different stages has been quite uh, amazing for me. Uh, when I started this journey uh, by attending these classes, you know, I just took it as one FDP that I need to attend because EICT wants it. See, that is how I started my journey uh, <laughs> somewhere in November 2021 with SIP, ESIP for students. Uh, then as I went through these uh, FDPs, and uh, to be very frank with you, I first started, you know, uh, the first FDP of five days, uh, introductory uh, UHV class, uh, I started getting disturbed in the mind because there are a lot of churning started happening as I started understanding the things, uh, be it is about the self and so on, because I never thought that th there is something called as coexistence. Because I was just living myself on uh, the purpose of accumulating a lot of physical facility. And I just thought that, okay, I am here to, uh, you know, uh, be uh, forefront and I have to just compete with others in the professional life or I have to just be uh, ahead in terms of the wealth or something like that. And I never concentrated on what actually self is uh, wanting. And then I started feeling, uh, or you can say, I started getting the clarity, uh, what is understanding and what I need to understand was not known to me. Then I started focusing on what actually I need to focus on with respect to the self and body. And now I'm feeling comfortable with myself and what I'm thinking. So that is one thing that has happened. So, uh, you know, uh, that means that uh, I'm feeling that coexistence and harmony between self and body, which I never concentrated on consciously. So that consciousness in terms of my own existence has really occurred that, that much I can say. And Very when nice. it comes, yes, ma'am. Yes. See, um, 
like you're mentioning, yes, a lot of things we never thought about. And really yes. speaking, in all of our life, although this is something so significant that you know it is something about our own happiness, somehow nobody seemed to pay attention to it. It's not taught in school. Um, we don't really get to hear about it. We may be getting bits and pieces here and there. But yes. as a holistic look at things, we didn't really think about it. Yes. So naturally, then we go with the flow, with whatever right. is happening in society. We think, okay, I also have to be in this rat race. I also have to compete. I must be at the top. And in that whole process, we create so much unhappiness for ourselves. Yes. So uh, very true that, you know, this, uh, this change within us yes. makes us feel a lot more happy, a lot more calm. Yes. more comfortable with ourselves yes and as many of you have shared some improvement in our relationships which may have been a sore point with many of us yes so that is very significant and as we go further in uhb3 we'll see that you know whatever we thought we have reached as a level in understanding now we may see that that may be just the tip of the iceberg. There is a lot more to understand, a lot more to look within, to see within ourselves, and to explore deeper. So as we go along, we'll yes, uh, talk about that also. Very nice. Uh, Thank you. I would like to just add one thing, because uh, now I am trying to concentrate, or you can say focus on my thoughts, desires, and expectations, which I never did. That's why I felt, uh, you know, discomfort thinking of what I thought earlier. And now I'm realizing what I should not have. So that is giving me a lot of comfort. And now every time when even I, uh, you know, interact with other people, I focus on my, what I'm going to respond, then what I am going to react. Because reaction is spontaneous. So I always take time to respond, even in my uh, you know, college and even at family or friends. So that has given me more comfort and calmness. So this is what I wanted to share. Yes. Nice. We will now, you know, as we go further, we will look at, you know, how reaction used to be spontaneous. Is it possible for response also to be spontaneous without having to do that much thinking about it? So, as we go along, we'll notice or we'll talk about this also when we do the exercises that we develop some, you know, um, we have some assumption about everything. And when that assumption uh, in our experience keeps getting sort of uh, more and more rooted in us, it becomes our sanskar. Because that's how now we perceive everything. So as a reaction, you know, how we feel, how we think, everything becomes in line with that assumption. So as we explore deeper, as we understand things better, we will also be able to see some of these sanskars that are driving our feelings and that are driving our thoughts so that it seems spontaneous, that reaction. And as we start seeing a shift in our sanskars, we'll notice that now we don't spontaneously react, but rather slowly that shift may be happening that we don't even have to think. And slowly the response is happening, even without our consciously trying to, you know, control or respond outside. So very nice. Thank you for your sharing. Now we'll go a little further. G. So in UHV2, we started to see this process of self-exploration. What is this process? How do you do the self-exploration? And now in UHV3, we will actually do that process in a little more depth. 
we will look at the exercises where we are seeing directly within the self, exploring deeper. In UHV 2, we were given this information that the human being is a coexistence of self and body. And that, like many of you have shared, is a huge shift in our assumption. Because earlier we may have thought human being is body. With this shift in our assumption that human being is not just the body, it is actually self and body. Now everything changes. So earlier our purpose may have been linked to the body. That because, you know, I'm searching for happiness, I try to get it through the body. So therefore, trying to, you know, get happiness through eating good food, tasty food, going out for movies, going out with friends, going to different places, hearing nice music, everything to sort of indulge the senses that we thought is giving us happiness. Even so much as to try to get others to behave the way we want so that we can be happy. So everything, our whole effort was outside. Try to change the outside, the environment, so that I can be happy. And one is to make that change happen in that environment. And a lot of times we may have realized that this is not possible. But we kept trying. And in that process, we were increasing our unhappiness at more and more moments. The more we try, the harder we try, and it doesn't happen, the more unhappy we become. So with all of that, we were trying to get more and more and more physical facility from outside to try to be happy within, not realizing that the focus was in the wrong place. But with this, that human being is coexistence of self and body, now some focus goes to the self. I can see that I want to live with continuous happiness. And because this need is of the self, this happiness is to be calm, to be comfortable, to be in harmony within myself, then obviously my effort needs to be within myself. Whatever I'm trying to get, accumulate, this physical facility I'm trying to get from outside, that, that can certainly help with the body, with the needs of the body. The body needs food, the body needs clothes. All of that can be done with the physical facility that I get from outside. But does it really do anything for the self? And of course, we explored this in UHP2 also. And we saw that, you know, for the body, yes, physical facility is useful. For happiness in the self, it doesn't seem to do much. No matter how much I seem to accumulate, that happiness seems to be missing. Or it looks like I'm happy for a few moments, or maybe for a day with the new gadget or the new thing I acquired. But after that, it all comes back to the usual. and my state, I don't see that much significant change. So now I may be noticing this, that when I realize that the physical facility is meant largely for the body, it's not doing anything for the self, then I can also see that the body requires physical facility only in a very limited quantity. It's not something random. It's not something that is undefined, unlimited. So now I can define it. I can quantify it. I can see that it is limited. Then I can go about trying to acquire that much so that I can be prosperous. That is also a part of being happy, isn't it? So rather than trying to accumulate more and more and more physical facility, now I start trying to understand about this harmony within myself, 
in the family, in society, in, in the whole environment that I am in. So one shift we may have noticed, and that can be said or put in the same, um, same thing can be said uh, you know, in a nutshell. Uh, if you can go to the next slide. Yeah. So here you can see before UHV2, my assumption may have been that human being is body. After UHV2, I at least got this information that human being is coexistence of self and body. And it got me reflecting on this. So earlier, before UHV2, my goal, as like some of you have shared, may have been trying to get happiness through physical facility, through sensation. And it was transitory, but I didn't know how to go about it. We all wanted that happiness, but perhaps we didn't know how to get there. So we kept trying this and it didn't seem to work. But after UHV2, we may have noticed that, or at least our you know, focus has shifted a little bit to see that I need happiness and prosperity within myself. I need to have that feeling of prosperity. And I want to be happy. And it's not just in bits and pieces that I want to be happy. I want to be happy all the time. Every moment. The moment I am unhappy, I am disturbed, I, am, I don't feel good. And I want to change that. I want to come out of it. So while earlier my program may have been to try to accumulate more and more physical facility, trying to get other people to behave the way I want, to say the things I want them to say, to share their, you know, the right feeling with me, that they should not get angry with me, they should talk nicely to me. Now my focus shifts on trying to understand better, trying to understand the relationship better, trying to see what I can do to improve the relationship rather than just expecting things to change outside. And even with physical facility, like many of you have shared, we try to see how much is really needed rather than just go on accumulating. So with this, we come to what must have happened in you. At least we are able to see that this content about this whole existential reality, whatever we are trying to study, that this is significant. It is relevant for us and we need to understand it in more depth. That is obvious because so many of you have joined. You have woken up early in the morning. You are you know, taking part in this um, program. You're not getting any physical facility out of it. But you are getting something more um, enriching for yourself. Obviously, that, that change you are able to see. Therefore, you can see that this is something relevant. So you want to understand it in more depth. You may have concluded with all the effort that you have put in to try to understand this, to try to live according to it. This conclusion may have become quite apparent that we have to work on ourselves first rather than look outside for our happiness, we have to look within and make effort on ourselves first. And this happiness and unhappiness that is happening within, we are responsible for it. We are doing it to ourselves. Like it was shared earlier also, and we were discussing this, that earlier when we tried to change other people, when we tried to get them to do things the way we want it, and all of that. Sometimes 
we were successful many a times we were not successful but either way there was a lot of struggle lot of discomfort lot of tension inside lot of conflict unhappiness so we were doing it to ourselves because now we may be able to see that even though we are getting the work done outside now that unhappiness has been replaced with the calm the comfort level because we are we have shifted our focus from trying to get things from outside to trying to see our role what is the effort we need to make on ourselves and we are able to see that this happiness and unhappiness the state that i am in within myself that is my own doing the other the one outside or the situation outside may seem to be the one that is causing the problem but that is only a trigger that is drawing my attention to the fact that i myself am responsible for this what is happening and i can make that change happen within myself so you may have been able to see this and this is what qualifies for your further trying to you know understand better or in more depth in uhb3 you may also be able to see that the self is there and the body is there so when we say we are able to see the coexistence of the self and body we may see it as some concept may not be totally in our living yet and that's fine too because when we get the information some of our sanskars are so deep that it takes time for this information to seep in for us to reflect on it contemplate on it and bring it in our living in totality so from time to time when our uh, focus shifts to the self it may be happening at other times we may be unaware and again we may be shifting back to thinking that we are the body not really becoming aware of the thoughts but in our living it may be reflecting like that from time to time but we want to be happy all the time so this has to be something that comes into our what we say no spontaneous response but at least we are able to see that yes there is a self the self is the one that is important that is where you know i'm looking for or wanting to have this comfort within this harmony within this happiness within so most of the effort we may have been making earlier to try to fulfill the needs of the body without realizing that this is not going to do anything for the self now you are able to see that that can only do something for the body now you can see that for happiness in the self i need to further understand this coexistence of self and body and live according to that at least we are able to see the significance we are able to see that importance yeah also uh the the whole existence you know in science we learn that it is all material now we got this information that there is space also and all the units are submerged in space we may feel we have understood that but it may be again something that we have conceptualized a lot of times our focus is still on the units and we may be thinking that this uh, interval between the units that this is space 
but space is far more subtle than that. And we'll try to understand that also in UHV 3. So for all of these things to happen, one is, you know, my activity outside. But if I see for everything to happen outside, first there is something that is happening within me. So what do I have to try to do within myself? So now we saw that we are trying to our attention is being drawn towards myself, within myself. So earlier I may have had some thoughts like, I try to get importance through various ways. I try to dominate over others. I try to make the rules and expect everybody to follow the rules. And when they don't, then I get upset. But now, we may have shifted from that and started looking at what I am thinking. What am I feeling? What is my real goal? Where do I want to reach as a human being? We start becoming aware, like you shared, of your own desires, your thoughts, your expectations. And you notice that you are more calm within. So you may be realizing that our goal is much more than accumulation of physical facility. You start thinking about prosperity. Rather than accumulating more, you start thinking about how you already may have enough. Or at least you try not to get more and more because you can see that you may already be prosperous and you already have many things that you may not be utilizing properly. So you start utilizing the things that you have better than before. You may start sharing things with others. When we think we have enough, then we share with others. But if I think I don't have enough, I hold on to it and I don't like to share with others. So we may have noticed that we have become more sharing with others. We want to help others also be prosperous. It's not a competition. It's not like I want to have more than the others. Now I start seeing I have enough, I can share with the others so the other also can be prosperous. You may be able to see the significance of the relationship. You may have, you know, the thought must have gone to this and even in our, um, like the sharing happened, you know, about seeing the intention of the other, that the intention is pure in the other. We may have noticed that feeling is what is important in relationship. So no matter how much physical facility we give to the other person to compensate for the, the fights we may have, does it really work? Or do we want to, we are still looking for the right feeling from the other person. So the feeling is what is important in relationship. Even earlier when we were not aware of the feeling, we were still trying to get the right feeling from the other. That shift must happen that rather than focusing on getting the feeling from the other, we start focusing on how to have the right feeling within myself. Because ultimately, that feeling within myself is deciding my happiness or unhappiness. So when I have the right feeling in myself, I feel happy. When I express this right feeling to the other person, it leads to happiness in the other person also. Earlier, when I was trying to expect the right feeling from the other person, it is not uh, a very comfortable feeling because you are constantly depending on somebody else. It's like going with a begging bowl and say, please give me the right feeling. So many times, you know, uh, some small thing, 
a triggering point maybe you go out to buy something and you say that the person was rude and you get upset and angry and you come out so it was not about the physical facility the problem happened because you felt the other person did not have the right feeling for you so we are trying to get that right feeling all the time because feeling is what is important in relationship so when we understand the feelings when we see that you know in in uhv3 we'll be doing some exercises where we will try to look at our feeling and see how this feeling that shift can happen where that feeling within myself i start ensuring that so that now i am not dependent on the outside for getting the right feeling rather i can see that when i have the right feeling i am happy it's not about the other person so i can be happy whenever i want it's not that i have to depend on somebody outside for it so therefore we notice all these things that i am no longer reacting like some of you shared i am not getting irritated as much i am not getting angry as much and that we look at more depth in more depth now in uhv3 and try to see if we can go deeper in that see if we can try to explore more into it and how we can improve on our state of happiness within so in all of this we can see that we have to work on our own competence we may have you know reduced trying to correct the other person outside and started focusing on ourselves even when you know lot of people say but the problem is outside so and so doesn't listen so and so doesn't even in my family i think a certain way but others are not willing to listen but if i focus on myself and i improve my competence my behavior changes towards them soon enough they will start noticing that change when they notice that change they will themselves come to you and ask how is it that now you know you are not reacting you are not getting angry as much children will come to you and say that you know this is very nice you are not getting angry with me anymore and all of those changes when they are happening then is the right time to try to talk to them about what this can do for them but we what we try to do is we get this information and we say okay this is very good and everybody should hear it and everybody must practice it so we try to get everybody in the family to go through it but they can see that our behavior may not have fully changed so they can see our competence is still lacking we still keep getting angry when they don't listen to us we get angry i told my daughter to join this session she didn't join i made her join also she is not listening now i am angry if i am angry she is able to see that it's not helping you why will she do it and so on so these things we may notice and ultimately we find that the work has to be done within ourselves outside the changes you know when we do the work they may or may not fully happen because that outside whatever happens is not totally in my control but what is happening within me that is entirely up to me so that is something that shift may happen so all in all we have decided to understand things in depth we may have many questions and we are trying to get the answer so we'll try to take as many questions as uh, there are um i have uh, two questions the first one is i would like a little more clarification on i think second slide that uh, that situations are sometimes a triggering point for uh, you right uh, mm -hmm. that clarify 
application. I want little more uh, detail about that point, ma'am. So your confusion is that uh, how is it that the situation is only a triggering point? Is that what you are asking? Yeah, a little more because I can relate it, but I want exactly like I just wanted to understand this. Ma the yeah. other or the situation are only a triggering point. Yeah. This yeah. One. So this uh, becomes very clear to us when uh, see many people now mentioned that earlier. I had so many issues, like somebody mentioned at workplace, there were a lot of problems earlier. Now I am more calm, more comfortable. So the work may be getting done earlier also, may be getting now, done now also. But what has changed is I am more calm. Earlier I was not. Right? Yes. So before UHV2, we may have thought that all this this disturbance I'm feeling inside is because the other person did something. Therefore, I'm getting disturbed. Yes. Isn't it? We say it also like this. That I was fine till so-and-so came and disturbed me. Hmm. You know? We even say things like uh, you know, Kiska ke uthe te? when hmm. we woke up, whose face did we see because we the whole day went bad. Yes. So we try to find some cause outside for it, for our unhappiness. And we think that the other person or the situation outside is responsible for my unhappiness. The sad part in that is you don't know how to make it change. Mm. Isn't it? As a human being, this entire existence for it to function the way you want it to, do you think it is possible? Is it? Yeah, uh, it is possible. Definitely it is possible. Is it possible for the entire existence to be the way you want it to be? Uh, no, ma'am. No. I can see inside me, right? I can make my eyes uh, like, yeah. happy. What I'm saying is we, we kept trying to change things outside. We kept trying to have people behave the way we want them to behave. This one should talk nicely to me. Why didn't that one wish me this morning? They should wish me. All this we kept trying to do because we thought that person is responsible for my unhappiness. I'm unhappy. What can I do? I was in a good mood till that fellow came and said this. Now I'm in a bad mood. So what am I trying to say here? That the other person is responsible for my bad mood. Isn't it? Yes. But that shift takes place when I start seeing that even though the other person is saying all those things, now what have I noticed? That the other's intention is not bad. Isn't it? That the other, the other's intention is just like mine. It's just that he lacks competence. He doesn't have understanding. So I shift to what can I do to help this guy? Now my whole focus has shifted from getting him to behave the way I want to trying to see how I can help him be better. So you see, now when I have the right feeling, I notice that even though outside he may still be behaving that way, now I'm not getting disturbed. What does that mean? That the cause of disturbance was not outside. It was within me. Because what is outside has not changed. But inside, I am more calm. So that becomes a very significant change that you notice. That the situation outside may not change. But I am calmer in the same situation. That means that was only a trigger that was drawing my attention to it. But I can change the state that I am in within myself, even though the situation outside may not change. You are in a traffic jam. Earlier, you may have been very disturbed in the traffic jam. You may have started shouting at people. You don't see where you are going, look where you are going and all of that. Now, you may not be getting disturbed. Traffic has not changed. But your response has changed. You see? Does it? Yeah, I agree with this, ma'am. Totally, I agree. Ma'am, uh, suppose... Uh... Um, there are few relationships, like I would, I won't say relationship, like hierarchy. I would say 
uh, that you know suppose boss boss is the trigger point you know for the existence also in the office for the existence also we have to uh, listen to that person and whatever he does wrong we have to tolerate that also for existence forget about promotions forget about something good will happen for You're existence survival what? then when we say existence we are talking about the entire existence you mean for survival is that what yeah, you're saying yeah for survival say the job will be in danger in that way also we cannot fight with the boss okay but the person is very triggering or you know the person is really he doesn't feel uh, you know good for you you know you know very clear about it so in this situation should we think in such a way that the person understanding is not competent enough he doesn't understand so uh, in this way we should make ourselves understand and be calm see <laughs> what happens is right now what are we doing we are not saying anything are we happy mm, no what do you think huh? like you are saying there is mm. a boss he is like this you mm. can't say anything okay you are not saying anything are you happy in that state not very much not happy so yeah. all we are saying is first of all let me be in the right state then i will work on the outside also not that we will continue the same way go on the same way problem is we can't discuss anything with the boss because first and foremost we don't have the right feeling we are ready to complain and fight mm. so when we go in front of the other person it becomes an argument Mm. rather than a discussion but if i improve mm. my competence if i can work on myself first right not get disturbed by the other person shouting now i can see a different picture isn't it with that yes. right feeling in me now i can discuss things with him and he might be listening he might be able to listen to me but you can keep it open and we can try it out later also important thing is for me to have the right feeling for that person and then when i talk to that person now the problem is not there because that discussion stays a discussion we talk about relevant point it doesn't become into an argument we don't start you know um bad mouthing the other person now the whole discussion may shift in a different direction but i would keep it open we'll explore into this in a lot more depth and um, i totally adapted this and it happened also okay and the person is like the like ma'am the boss is totally understanding me okay and i adapted through uhv only that is you know yeah. i kept the proposal i was very kind i understood her i kept myself also very kind and the person understood also things are going very well but how long it will go well i don't know <laughs> that is the point but you know it it requires effort you know i uh, really feel because you effort. see when you have to work on yourself you have to make effort otherwise if you are just waiting for things outside to change on their own it's not going to happen we've been doing that all along isn't it we are we are wanting things to change outside but it's not happening and then we get disturbed you get unhappy but we are not making effort to see within and see what i can do to improve my own competence before i try to go and change the whole world isn't it so that shift but i would like to confess one thing that i get promotion or not doesn't matter but i'm happy inside because i doesn't knew matter. yeah because now at least i know how to deal with it whatever the person does it doesn't i really understand that the person doesn't understand you know i take them to be relative kind of person okay fine it's okay you know at least mm -hmm. the one thing which i got is peace so mm -hmm. i'm happy mm -hmm. but i adapted this and applied also and it worked also it yeah. really was thank you thank, thank you so you. much i was just assuring whether i'm going in the right path or not that yeah. thank you thank you good morning very good morning ma'am uh, in a triggering point uh, when we talk about at a macro level because you see all the issues are revolving around at a macro level 
if you take any case study of a maruti or anything it has become a fire anna so how how a good how we can inculcate this triggering point to make it calm to the our students in a corporate now see before we get to the students and other people first let's try to see it in ourselves when we improve our competence then we can help others also isn't it so am i able to see it within myself for myself is it happening if it's not happening then i need to work on myself first see that it's you know so mean uh, ma'am i'm sorry to interfere you mean to say that the corporate hr manager should uh, have to have more competencies in uh, no i'm not the... saying that i am saying we have to start trying to see this within ourselves is it working for me first then go to look at others isn't it but the issue was at a large scale which have yeah, triggered scale okay whatever the scale may be however big the problem may be outside am i calm or comfortable inside or am i disturbed that is the question about my competence isn't it if i am getting disturbed the problem is mine it is not because of that situation i am disturbed because something inside me that is responsible for that can i change that can i be happy comfortable and then work on solution sorry i am i am disturbing again ma'am please i am interfering so can we say that the student has to have more competencies because in the next slide you have okay, talked about the... i'll stop you there let's not look at the student right now let's look at myself in my living is this happening or not that is where we'll start from isn't it we'll see yes. that our competence is improving then we'll help the others so at least in this course our focus has to be on ourselves whatever we are discussing let's try to look at it within ourselves let me look at my imagination let me look at my thoughts my feeling as we go along in the exercises it will become clearer when we go into the details of you know looking within it will become more clear but i would say just you know uh till we get there you can perhaps keep this open but essentially rather than seeing problems in others and trying to help others let's try to see for ourselves first have we understood this have we okay. concluded this that i am responsible for my own happiness and unhappiness the outside yes. can only be a triggering factor but ultimately yeah. i can have that happiness yes ma'am yes ma'am we'll reflect on this today that in in our living you know can we see that the outside situations the outside people other human beings everything outside can only be a triggering point for me that my happiness and unhappiness is entirely up to me are we able to see a glimpse of this or not and we'll discuss this further tomorrow we'll stop here now thank you so much for the session